Hey guys, so if you're new here or if you're not, if you want to hear me voice act, head over to our main channel, links down below. And if you don't, this channel's solely for TTS. Um, if you want to know all the details about what's going on, we have a stream up that you can go and watch, but let's just get into the video. Fatal. Were you looking for F? A. T. A. L. The card game? Please tell us you were looking for the card game. So basically, Fatal is the date rape RPG. Another faulty conclusion by Darren. Where is dating included? A copy of Fantasy Adventure to Adult Lechery is what would pop out if seen Shinurgle if they gang raped Slanish while using Korn's chain axe as a condom. It is, in theory, an RPG that lets neckbirds live out their rape fantasies. The gaming community has more or less unanimously come to the conclusion that Fatal, Akka the date rape RPG, without the dating, is simply the worst RPG ever conceived. At least, those that haven't encountered Raha. But then, that game is much less well known, so much the better for us, and in comparison there have been actual documented attempts to actually play Fatal, amazingly enough. Probably never in earnest, though, perhaps even by its bonamongeringly unhinged authors. F. A. T. A. L. Is, truly, a blasphemous merger of metal and fail. And a John Norman. The rulebook, written by one Byron Hall and a few of his friends, who go by nicknames such as Torturan, Burnout, and Satan, is as terribly mechanically written as it is obsessed with bizarre sexual perversions that make D seem prudish by comparison. It is filled with enough pointless random charts and obscure rules to deter even a veteran DM who has played Roller Master for years. Quadratic equations are a requirement of most game mechanics. The anal circumference table meme originates with Fatal. The game was apparently revised and given a new name for the acronym. From another time, another land makes minor changes to the text, read, removes the racist magical armor, but is still an abortion of gaming. The Fatal Games website is now thankfully defunct. The current page is your average parked domain crap. However, some fine gentlemen of the Wayback Machine have archived it in all its neon on black plastered with animated GIFs glory. Enter at your own risk. It sparked a review by McLennan and Sartin, which was really more of a profanity laden rant, admittedly a common reaction to the game, and this review in turn provoked a rebuttal from the game's creators. Reading the exchange between the two is almost guaranteed to cause brain damage. To sum it up. The reviewers spent most of their time talking about the various kinds of torture that would be preferable to playing the game, and the various kinds of torture they'd like to inflict on its creators, and how mentally ill and or socially awkward they imagine its creators must be, and so on. Though legitimate criticisms were also made which anyone could say would justify their invective. See mechanics section below. Or don't, if you'd rather preserve your last shriveled speck of faith in humanity. The game's creators, not to be outdone, turned their ability to totally miss the point on full blast and showed the world a level of detail-obsessed pedantry that had been previously considered impossible. Their counter-arguments included, Facial charisma is not how good you look. It's how good your face looks, I believe what Sartan is looking for is enunciation, not rhetorical charisma, and enunciation is better termed a sub-ability than a stat. They also attempted to defend governing something as simple as urination with a formula as complex as D100 plus urination skill points plus average of health and hand-eye coordination skill modifiers plus comma time since last urination versus ounces drunk modifier without even attempting to justify why urinating is a skill that exists. They did attempt to justify why it's possible to have an average speaking speed higher than your maximum speaking speed, but their justification had something to do with conflating random distributions with even distributions in order to claim that bell curve distributions aren't random. And. Look, you were warned about the brain damage, okay? Setting. Want the details? You do. Courtesy of the 1D4 chan authors who had to pause for throwing up many times over many months. Here we go. It's pre-Christian Europe, more specifically, a hodgepodge of medieval Europe and the Roman Empire, with a bit of Semitic cultural immigration. Nephilim Anakim exist as winged sexy humans, 
The closest thing to the Judeo-Christian God is actually the result of a normal spell that makes a bush burn with magical fires and perpetuity and gives cryptic answers along with I am what I am. Suggesting Moses just did a random spell and thought it was he was speaking. It is a mix of Rome's darkest stereotypes meets Viking myths, but every race is as fucktarded as the creators. The Anakim are almost all slaves, even though their extreme stats can easily earn them a dominant position in society. Their males have enormous penises and random quirks that makes them fit for a horror game rather than erotic fantasy, their females being shapely sluts with similar weird shit going on. The bugbears are Bronze Age Vikings that go so edgy that would make drow tales seem tame by comparison, raping everyone they don't kill in coastal raids and taking the survivors to processing centers, slave pits with extremely torturous work pits with no productivity in mind but making the worst piss shit torture dehumanization porn play in a game that's full of that crap. Human women die 100% in stillborn childbirth raped by bugbears but they keep them from killing themselves just for fun. Bugbear scientists vivisect and rape human slaves for education, and magic is stayed monopolized, and bugbear clans support bugbear criminals raping and killing in other races lands. Bugbear women have no names, and daughters are brought to adolescence by their fathers. Light elves are relatively tame, but they still beat the shit out of trespassers and starve criminals slowly to death, and women have to play a flute as they are getting fucked to determine the child's character. Dark elves have weekly masturbation contests, live under trees and rape kill trespassers, and fuck each other's asses, anal only, in masked gatherings. Subterranean trolls have a punishment system of hitting genitals with a hammer, male trolls have to kidnap a human woman as a slave present to be enslaved raped killed eaten, and if the female refuses the gift, the male takes the woman to be dismembered alive. Ogres are cannibals, I don't know much about this setting. But that sounds really damn tame compared to everything else. Hill trolls are sick fucks that get hard touching the brains of caught and slaughtered humans and like to fuck brain matter in the corpses before eating them. Humans are no better. Being caught performing magic means getting raped and burned alive publicly. Butchers regularly add human meat from cheaper slaves and dead humans to pork mix. Brothels and slavery is rampant. And even the priests join nightly gang rape groups that are neither persecuted, nor stigmatized, nor punished. Gore, cannibalism, slavery, d, racism pentefector. Magical realm at its finest. Mechanics. Are you sure? Are you absolutely sure? Okay, you asked for it. The GM is called the Edile, because that's an actual Latin word for master of the Colosseum games, or game master for short. What is it with authors of explicitly smutty RPG materials like this and the book of erotic fantasy that they have to be pretentious dicks about it? Answer, because in the original version he was. Wait for it. The May Master. You may now groan. Close bracket. The intro says you only need to know a little algebra, and even that is relatively rare. It also says you only need 2d10. Both of these are filthy fucking lies. Ability scores are derived from averaging sub-abilities rolled as 10d100 stroke 5, minus 1 and modified by one of three different types of percentages, and conditions during the game may change your sub-abilities which means you need to recalculate your ability scores on the fly. Ability score checks are 3d10, so no you need more than 2 dice. Apparently you'll need this little algebra because you solve quadratic formulas to find out whether or not your rape slave is pregnant. Then you roll d10 million to find out if she's going to have quintuplets. Jesus Christ. The character sheet is 11 pages long. There are 20 sub-abilities, including enunciation and spatial intelligence. Also note that by this point in charge and you have already rolled your 2d10 80 times, which determine 5 ability scores. The ethics system is a D&D good evil lawful chaotic using ethics which is described vaguely differently from morals, both of which are based on a butchered reading of Aristotelian philosophy, four different temperament scores based on bodily humors, and by the way, the book dedicated 23 pages to describing your alignment alone, a primary and secondary temperament in addition to that, and a disposition that is different from that too, which is another 22 pages long. On the second page of the character sheet are the following essential measurements, manhood length, manhood circumference, 
Anal circumference potential. Vaginal circumference potential. Vaginal depth potential. Areola diameter. Nipple length. Cup size. Tongue size. Hymen resistance. Areola hue. Foot size. Fist circumference. Head circumference. Handedness. These measurements are essential, because during combat your role may cause you to accidentally start raping your opponent, and how many hit points they lose depends on the mismatch between the circumference of your appendage and their orifice. In case you missed some of that, it is possible to accidentally rape an opponent to death during normal combat. Then you have to roll for other things like your height and weight, and then calculate your BMI based on those most and least attractive features, hair color skin color, visual acuity, age, which also acts as a modifier for all those abilities and sub-abilities, forcing you to go back and change all those stats again. A check to see if your intelligence score is low enough to qualify for retard strength bonuses, birthday, social class, birthplace, number of siblings, and marital status. In other words, roll randomly for just about everything that any other game system would allow the player to choose for themselves, in the unlikely event that they desperately needed to know the precise size of your foot to the nearest hundredth of an inch. Among the 418 skills each character must keep track of are basket weaving, hand eye, common sense, clock making, spatial, delousing, hand eye, glove making, spatial, massage, kinetic charisma, hand eye, spitting, enunciation, and even urinating. Yes, pissing is a skill. Yes, you can fail your rolls to piss, which as you could see in the last section are far more complex than they could possibly need to be. A character's body has 17 hit locations, each with independent hit point totals, each with their own armor equipment slots, and each of the 17 pieces of armor have 4 different types of damage resistance, brawling, hacking, Pounding and stabbing. Magical items range from the mostly useless, to the suicidally dangerous, to the completely insane. Here's a list of notable ones. No tabletop RPG is complete without beautiful models on the table and the best place to get models is from us. If you check the link below we have everything you could need for your magical realm. Only the finest of big titty wafers here. But if you're not into models or don't play with models we got you covered with subclasses such as the Gachimashi Wizards, the Simp Warlock and the North FC Fighter. Also we have started selling 5th edition adventures with our first one featuring Belle Delphine, the succubus that has poisoned the town's well and turned the villagers into simps. If any of that stuff sounds fun to you go ahead and check the link below but let's get back to the video. Filter of, race name, lust. Drink this and every being of the race listed within 100 feet will try to fuck you. Cloak of self craving. The wearer will try to perform oral sex on themselves, possibly breaking his own neck in the process. Chastity belt of cursed impregnation. The wearer is knocked up. The difference between this and the uncursed version is that the cursed version always makes the unborn child a girl. Really. Jar of jacking off. Whenever a male opens this jar, they must pass a drive sub ability check at th80 or be compelled to force their fuckstick into the jar. Once inside, the jar will inexplicably grip it firmly and jerk it to completion, even against the will of the opener. Upon completion, the comer, sick, must roll percentile dice. If the results are 0 1 10, then the jar becomes pregnant. If the jar is pregnant, it will not allow itself to be opened. It will care for the fetus within, which will be heard screaming by others within 1d 100 feet day and night. After 9 months of fetal torture, the child will be born and the jar will break. If the jar is broken during its pregnancy, then the dying and twitching fetus will explode after 1d 6 rounds of twitching. The explosion will cause 1d 4 life points of sonic damage to all within 1d 4 miles. Baby parts are inexplicably everywhere. When born. The baby will be an ethical immoral, translation, chaotic evil, will serve the father loyally, will obsessively collect jars, and seem to be male but have no penis, but oversized testicles, which can never ejaculate. Therefore, this child will be forever frustrated. Any child of a jar will insist that others call them Chucky. What a reference to the child's play movies is doing in a historically mythically accurate RPG is anyone's guess. 
Interestingly, this seems to have partially inspired Death Stranding. In hindsight we should have all known Hideo Kojima would be a DM. Seed of hate. Planting this seed in front of a druid's house causes a tree to grow that makes everything hate the druid in question. The only way to kill a tree that resulted from this seed is for the druid to start having anal sex with random animals until he sows a seed of love. This may cause him to develop a bestiality fetish. Mirror of many. A ripoff of the mirror from Evil Dead. Ring of the Lords. It's the fucking one ring. Cursed dildo of impregnation. The user is impregnated with another dildo, which is likely to kill her. Weapon. Of ravishing. The user will occasionally try to rape random women with the weapon, which will somehow impregnate them with another rapist weapon that kills them upon giving birth to it. Armor of Dewey Jubaka. Whosoever dons this armor will acquire a nose twice the size and a manhood half the size. Further, the wearer will become extremely greedy and fight to the death for one silver piece. Finally, the wearer acquires 2 inches of hair all over their body, resulting in halving their facial charisma and bodily attractiveness. While hairy, the wearer must bathe every 1d6 hours or smell foul. There are 3 other armors just like this which turn the wearer into an ethnic stereotype with no benefits whatsoever. According to Byron, this was supposed to be controversial humor. So funny everyone forgot to laugh. The other armor if for whatever reason you really needed to know is. Armor of Nigress Nincompoopery. Whosoever dons this armor experiences a loss of 1d100 points from each sub ability of intelligence, wisdom, and charisma. The ass of the wearer will grow by 50% and be abnormally high. If the wearer is male, then those around him are 80% likely to believe that his manhood has increased, though it has not. The skin of the wearer becomes cursed and dark as night. Disposition turns to UI. Temperament becomes phlegmatic. The eyes of the wearer are visible 3 miles away at night. The wearer will have a body odor for 1d10 feet. On the bright side, the physical fitness of the wearer increases by 10%. The armor may be removed at will. Also the name translates to armor of nigger retardation. Smooth. Armor of Gookums. Whosoever dons this armor experiences an increase of 1d20 points of intelligence in each sub-ability and is reduced to 80% of natural height. The eyelids of the wearer will swell as though hit with a maul, and vision is reduced to 25%. Most importantly, the manhood or cup size is reduced to 50%. Strangely, the ass of the wearer will shrink, drop, and droop. Armor of Gresions. Whosoever wears this armor acquires hair that is greasy and dark. They lose half of their drive sub ability, are reduced to 90% of natural height, are 80% likely to beat their spouse if they have one, and will be magically unemployed for 1d100 days. However, if the wearer plays drums, the wearer gets a bonus of 1d100 to their skill check. Weapon of Torturan. The wielder becomes obsessed with removing his victim's eyes and shoving them into his nose, the victim's nose, not the wielder's, and also takes up sunbathing naked on top of cottages. Okay, that's oddly specific and rather disturbing, especially given that one of Byron Hall's friends is called Torturan. The magic system is split into ceremonial magic, which is situational at best and often utterly useless for doing anything you might actually need, and chaos magic which requires you to perform a ritual that requires a roll on a large ass syllable chart in case it requires a charm to perform, some random ingredients you might not even be able to acquire, and can take days to perform the required ritual. An example of a few spells follows, italicized spell names are ceremonial magic, and everything else is chaos magic. Against every wild animal, aquatic creature, and robbers, keeps wild animals, aquatic creatures and robbers away from you. Everything else that can kill you can still do so. Call God. Summons a God. The rulebook specifically states that whatever God in question will not be happy about being summoned and will probably kill the caster. Eternal spell for binding a lover. Smear the listed ingredients on the head of your dick, and when you fuck someone with it they'll beg you to stick it in them at least once a day. Numerous other love spells with similar effects are also present. Close bracket. Fatal. Kills everything on whatever horrid world the game takes place on, including the user. If only every game started with this spell being cast. Force fart. 
forces the target to fart, obviously. Have her cadaver, cast this on a dead woman and she'll look, sound, smell, taste, and feel just like she was alive but unconscious. The spell description explicitly states that it is meant to aid necrophilia. Draw your own conclusions. Or oh no, the victim's mouth now doubles as his anus, or vice versa. Did we mention that the effects of this spell are permanent? Perpetual orgasm. Take a fucking guess. The rulebook mentions that not only does this kill the target, but also that they continue to have an orgasm even after they die. Prognathism. The target's skull becomes prognathus. The lower half extends. The upper half retracts. Intelligence sub-abilities will be reduced by 15% and the target's speech will become slang. Yes, this is what you think. Test of pregnancy, self-explanatory, and disturbingly likely to be necessary. Wish, like the DND version, that the GM is encouraged to be as literal as possible, even picking a definition of the word at random if word has multiple definitions. A character wishes for a lot of gold. He gets several thousand pounds of gold bars dropped on top of him. And then there are the mascara tables, which have a variety of notably bizarre effects, including but certainly not limited to the next shit you take coming to life and trying to kill you. Fruit growing out of the caster's penis vagina, which can be consumed for stat bonuses. Gay ogres popping out of nowhere and trying to have butt sex with everyone nearby. It's all Logan now. A scratch and sniff vagina appears on the caster's head. An eyeball appears on the caster's penis, and can somehow act as a lie detector. The target's skin turns black. Edile may decide appropriate penalties. A gerbil falls out of the target's asshole. Congrats, you are now Richard Gere. The nearest woman is convinced that her name is Countryna, and insists that everyone nearby refers to her as such. A disembodied penis with wings appears and tries to rape everything nearby. Accidentally consuming the enemy while being raped. Accidentally cast fatal, see above. Everybody hopes to get this one. And many, many more. Classes are no less peculiar they range from the standard fare of warriors, mages, and the like to things which no sane person would play, such as delousers, einkmakers, and of course whores who get to longer right up than most other classes combined save for the ones with giant tables. Every class earns app, the equivalent of experience points, in different ways, and in some cases it is earned so slowly that a character, or even their player, can die of old age before they even reach level 2. TL, DR, it takes all the overcomplexity of World of Cinema, which, I shit you not, had an equation to show how hard you could breathe took out the law, classes and just about everything else that made Cinnabar worth a damn, added so many sexual perversions, that the introduction has the balls to claim all of it is only present just cause of its historic mythical relevance, that it would make Slanesh look twice, and shut out one of the worst RPG systems ever conceived. A jerk Well guys hope you enjoy today's video. We are going to assume you have if you have stayed to the end. Consider subscribing and clicking the notification bell if you really enjoyed it to stay up to speed with any and all new videos. Also check out the links below to our shop for some fat ass titties and our sponsor Rural and be sure to use a promo code at checkout so they know we sent you and you'll get 10% off. And until next time.